Hello everyone, my name is Ron Verhage. I'm the Mandalay broker for the United States. There are some questions that are being raised because of the current trade-in promotion that Mandalay is offering. And so we wanted to just give you some of the details because for some people, it's a little bit difficult to understand the, the need or the reason why uh, a person would, would want to trade their device in. In some cases, uh, it's not necessary for you to do that. In other cases, it's an it's an option. In some cases, it's a it's a very good likelihood that it's super super important for you to consider the trade in. So uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to go over some of the history of the devices, starting all the way back in the 1990s uh, with the QXEI, in a brief simplified way of of bringing this information out to you it's going to be a fairly long video so uh, don't be surprised um, because we have a lot to go through but i'm going to try to make it um, as easy to understand without getting into a lot of uh, of technical words and things like that so just to make it simple because it's really it really is simple for some of you who aren't uh, into computer terminology or things like that. Don't worry. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it um, very easy to understand. We'll talk about the device, and we'll talk about the software because really, when you think of it, there are two important functions to a biofeedback system: the hardware, which is the physical device, and then the software, which is what you use on the computer. As you know, from the 1990s, there have been a lot of techn technology changes. Um, Microsoft Windows has gone through, uh, from the time this started, it was uh, Windows 95. You had Windows 95, Windows 98, uh, Windows ME. I think there were a couple of other small versions in there that we really didn't really focus on. Then we went to um, uh, Windows XP and Windows... 8 and Windows 10 and Windows 11 so you can see in the software there's been a lot of adjustments and so each time this the operating system of the computers change the software usually has to change a little bit in the programming in order for things to work properly well there was a time period a couple of time periods I would say it was when um, when the big change from Windows 98 to Windows XP happened, and then from Windows XP to Windows 7, a, a lot of adjustments were made in the software. So let's talk a little bit about the, the, the hardware first. This is what is called the QXEI. Now, some of the devices have a, a label on the front that says QMCI or QXCI. It has what we call parallel ports or LTP1 ports. The, uh, these connectors are called uh, DB25, which basically means there's 25 pinholes. Um, and it, this, the reason there's two of them here is because it was used as a printer pass-through. And that was, I think that was in either 1996 or 1998 when this came out. It was in 2003 when they started designing the next device, which was the the SKIO device, and the SKIO device had a different port on the back. The next generation of, of technology, which was the serial port. So before I get to showing you what that looks like, the, the, the technology changed. What does that mean? They made the changes not because they wanted to, it was because of the changes in technology that were moving forward. So they had to upgrade the internal parts of the device to communicate through the proper ports that were being uh, uh, being designed and built in the current computers at the time. So, so this technology of the parallel um, basically started to disappear around 2003. It was fully gone out of the out of production, we'll say, in 2006. So this device here was actually discontinued in 2006. Uh, not just because of the port, but because the communication from the computer through the port had changed also. So no longer could they get computers to actually use this technology anymore. So everything had to change at that point. 
They changed the device and they changed the software. The next device is the SCIO device, okay? Most of your devices will have an SCIO or an EPFX on the, uh, on the front panel of the SCIO device. Now, if you look at the back, you're gonna see your accessory ports. You're gonna see a nine pin port, which is called a, um, a serial port. And then you're gonna see a battery tray because you could either use the nine volt power adapter or four AA batteries. And that was the, uh, the first design of the SCIO device. This was in, I believe they, they started uh, manufacturing it in 2003. It didn't really hit the United States until 2004. And they stopped producing these in early 2005. So I remember this very clearly because my first SCIO device was, I received it in January of 2004. So this was my, my actual first device. This is called a serial port. And so this technology has disappeared, I'm gonna say somewhere around maybe 2009. Um, no, it was later than that. Maybe we started having difficulty getting, um, getting, uh, serial port conversion cables to USB around that period of time. The next port that came out was the USB port. This one here. It's a rectangular port uh, and it's got this little uh, little computer board or wafer I like to call it in the middle. So that's the USB port and that came out in the middle of 2005 and, uh, and that's when the technology really took off uh, in popularity was when this USB SCIO device came out. So um, um, basically, on the, you see the difference on the back. This one had a, a nine volt power adapter plug and the battery tray, and this one only has the, the USB. Now, let me explain the reason uh, where the big change with this came in. Number one is serial technology was, was disappearing in the world. And number two, there was a safety concern. When you have your, your device plugged into a nine volt adapter, you're plugging directly into the, um, the outlet, which in the United States is 110 volts. And the uh, rest of the world, <laughs> much of the rest of the world is on 220 volts. And you had these uh, portable little adapters that would convert that, that larger voltage down to nine volts. Um, it wasn't a very good, um, we'll call it a transformer, uh, a, 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 um, a voltage protector, okay, to, because remember, you're attaching the device to a human body or an animal. So you want to really be c careful and concerned about the power that's coming to that device. So there was a little bit of a safety concern when it came to uh, plugging the device directly into an outlet. So when the USB device came out, now it was a big change because now you were able to take a five volt USB port, attach it to the computer, and the computer actually has two types of protection in it. So the laptops, obviously um, a laptop is gonna have a, a power adapter as well. And usually that uh, converts either 220 volts or 110 volts down to about 19 or 20 volts. So it's a little bit more power, but then inside the laptop, you also have another uh, voltage regulator in the laptop. So you actually have two modes of protection. First, the power adapter, and then the, the uh, regulator that's in the laptop. So it's actually a, a better form of protection for the human body. So that was another factor of why the change was made uh, was because of that voltage situation. So now we have the, um, the USB technology. And currently, you know, th this, was, this was, um, was basically 2005 when USB, we were actually on USB 2.0 at the time where some computers were, you know, USB came out a little bit earlier. It was called USB 1.0. Now we're on USB 2.0 in the year 
roughly uh, 2005. And, and now today, USB ports are USB 3.0 or 3.1 or 3.2. So we have different technologies. You see how te technology keeps increasing. Um, so, so the USB 2.0 is still in use today. It's still current technology because USB 3 and 3.2 or 3 and 3.1 are what we call backwards compatible to USB 2.0 or 1.0. Um, the, the difference in the versions of USB is speed. You have speed and power going through a USB port. So without getting really technical, USB skios are still in use today and they're still supported we can still repair them um, the previous generations of the the devices for example the the uh, serial skio and the um and the uh, qxei are it's it's old technology it's actually discontinued technology meaning we can't repair the devices anymore we can't uh really make modifications or changes to to them anymore um, it, it's just technology that is no longer usable as far as from that standpoint now on the QXEI device if you have a QXEI device and you have Windows XP software with it that's as far as the software really advanced um, properly with it now they made some um, concessions we'll call it up until 2014 for the QXEI in the in the software but the the technology should have only been used on windows xp if you have a, a a qxei and you have a windows xp computer there's no way to advance that any further in the future it's technology that is that doesn't exist today so for the qxei owners now is a good time for you to take advantage of the of a, of, of a trade-in when you see the trade-in it's available for a qxei you want to take advantage of that the serial skio is the same condition. The serial technology is virtually gone now. There is still one company that I know of, and believe me, we've tried hundreds of different um, conversion cables um, that, that still functions, but that is slowly disappearing as well. So very, very soon, there will not even be a cable that you can use with, a, with any kind of a current computer. Because we're on Windows 11, Mandalay has already experienced the fact that they cannot program the software on Windows 11 for serial technology anymore. Uh, and obviously for the QXCI parallel technology as well. So those two devices are, are not able to be used with the new software going forward. You can still use the, the Class 6455 21 software as as long as you can use that um, how long will that last I don't know um, it you know it it will eventually become obsolete but until then you can continue to use that software so when you see the new um, the new uh, 9922 version be fully released um, it will be for the USB skio and for the Q9 or Quest 9. Um, the other devices will need to stay on the 5521 software. So you can see where anyone with a serial SKIO or a QXEI would want to take advantage of a trade-in. Now the Indigo devices were not manufactured by Mandalay. They were manufactured by the Quantum Alliance and they were manufactured in North America. Their software is provided by another company and not Mandalay. And so Mandalay uh, software cannot be used with the Indigo device. Mandalay does from time to time offer a trade-in availability for Indigo devices to the new Mandalay Q9. The two devices that are very active are the Mandalay Q9 and then the the Skio device that has the USB port on the back. Those are the two current technologies. Uh, moving forward, that's those are the de the devices that we are programming for 
because of the differences in the technology, because of the differences in the programming uh, for Windows 11. Now, some people have made the comment, well, why don't we go back to this or why don't we go back to that? Well, with technology, there is no going back. Unfortunately, when technology changes, we have to change with it. Um, as, you know, it doesn't make sense for Mandalay to do programming on an older operating system that is now discontinued from Microsoft. It, it only makes sense for Mandalay to do their programming going forward for the next five, six, seven years. Um, with operating systems, that's about all you get these days is about five to seven years of, of uh, programming technology. Now, the hardware generally lasts longer than that, but we're, we've been seeing technology come out and disappear within five to ten years. For example, we talk about the QXCI. Parallel technology was around for maybe, I don't know, 10 or 12 years. Um, serial port technology was around for a shorter period of time. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was, it was probably five to seven years. USB technology has been out since 2000, 2000 maybe, 2002. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I might be a little bit wrong on my dates, but 20 years at least, USB technology has been around. Um, so we're due for something coming up in the future. My research has been that even though something new is coming out, which we already know USB-C is out, but what what's going to happen to USB? Well, my opinion, we have so many USB uh, devices out on the market. I'm not just talking about biofeedback. I'm talking about USB devices around the world, every kind of USB device there is. Um, it's still going to be around for a little while. So that's why Mandalay is still producing SKIO devices. And that's why Mandalay is using USB technology on the Mandalay Q9. It's still an active technology, although, although new technology is out. But eventually, they're going to have to make another change. Mandalay is is constantly in development of the software. And as you know, there were some things that took place back when Windows, uh, Windows 10 first came out. There were some adjustments that needed to be made. And now with Windows 11, there are new adjustments that need to be made. In fact, when the new software gets fully released, which is coming up fairly soon, um, you're going to see some differences in the software. Now, I've been working very closely with the programming team in Ma at Mandalay. And, uh, you know, we've been having some of these discussions about some things that are happening in the software. Why they need to change things in a certain way. Well, there's, there's two reasons. Two main, main reasons. Uh, one is Mandalay has updated their programming language. For those of you who don't know how programming is done. There is a what is called a programming language. There's many, many different kinds of programming languages out in the world today. And it's basically the ones and zeros behind what you see on the screen. So it's it's the the code that actually makes everything appear the way it does and function the way it does. The programming language is is now current. It, it has upgraded all the way to the most current software that they can use to do the programming. And since we're on Windows 11, they're programming for Windows 11. So if you have a Windows 10 computer, it's fairly similar to Windows 11, but there, but from the programming standpoint that Mandalay is, is working on going forward is quite a bit different in the background. So there are gonna be things in the new software you're gonna see that are different. For example, some of the areas that are highlighted um, in yellow or red or a different color in the in the software um, some of those functions in the software are going to change a little bit primarily because Microsoft makes the rules about programming for Windows 11 then the programming language has to follow those rules and so the our programmers that make our class 64 software have to follow those rules 
if they don't follow the rules, there are certain things that are going to happen. For example, things will break, we call it, or, or give you errors in the software, which none of us want. We've all experienced it. We don't want those kinds of errors. But the other thing is you're going to have um, things that uh, don't appear correctly on the screen. You're going to have uh, things that will not function correctly because it's not following those rules. Then, from a security standpoint, Microsoft makes the rules for all the antivirus and EDR companies. They make the rules so that those those companies know exactly what's supposed to happen in the software. If it doesn't happen the way it's supposed to, then they have to look at it as this could be a security threat. This could be malicious activity going on on the computer. So it stops it or blocks it or deletes it and now you have a non-functioning software. So you can see the importance of why Mandalay has to always make changes and adjustments as the world's computer technology makes its changes. So um, I, wa I want to bring this up because some of the comments that I personally have seen about the trade-in is why are we being forced to trade in? Well, nobody's being forced to trade in. It's an opportunity. Uh, I look at it always, the trade-in is an opportunity for you to take your technology, which might be a few years old or it might be 10, 15, or even 20 years old. It's an opportunity for you to get upgraded to the newest technology for a fraction of the cost of that technology. The trade-in price is usually right about the cost of half of the price of a new device. Now, there's, there's, so when you look at it, that's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you to trade in. It's like you know, in every country we have vehicles, right? We have cars or trucks or whatever. Um, most, in most places, I know here in the United States, um, they offer trade-ins for your vehicle. If your vehicle is 10 years old and it still has a value, they give you the value of that trade-in for a new car uh, or a new truck or, or a new vehicle. And so, now it may not always work out in your advantage where it's half the cost of a new um, in fact most in most cases your trade-in value is not going to be half the cost of a new car um, however Mandalay is giving you an opportunity at half the cost of a new biofeedback device do you see the similarity there that um, it it's an opportunity for you to take your old technology and trade it in for new it's not that somebody's forcing something upon you uh, please don't look at it that way. It's, an, it's, it's, uh, it's not intended to be that way. What Basically what Mandalay is doing is saying, we have old technology, let's replace it with the new technology. And Mandalay has costs. Everything has a cost. Um, personally, I'm involved at the level of, I know what the costs are. Uh, I'm in manufacturing myself. And, uh, you know, I know what the costs are. It, it, the costs are have gotten higher and higher and higher over the years. And so, you know, yes, this is a an electronic box. You know, there's, there's a, a cost value to it. But there's also technology. There's also the tooling. There's also a lot of things that go into being able to provide new devices for us you know, every few years that, you know, ever so often that it happens. Um, the Mandalay Q9 was originally uh, launched in 2018. It's 2023, it's five years later, and we still have that device and we're still marketing that device for new people coming into our, into our technology. And we don't, we don't really see the Mandalay Q9 being uh, discontinued anytime soon. But eventually it will be, and then there will be another trade-in opportunity for those of you who have Mandalay Q9s. You will have another opportunity to trade that device, your current device, into whatever the new technology is at the time. So this is going to continue on. It's going to be it's going to be uh, offered for a long time. I'm I'm not going to promise, you know, how many years it's going to be in between. 
you know, Mandalay can't make that promise. Um, Mandalay is always in development and always in adjustments. And so they will let you know when that time comes. Uh, but currently now, the opportunity to trade in to the Mandalay Q9 um, is is live and available and at a what I feel is a very affordable price, a very decent price. When you when you look at um, you know today is, is 2023, you know uh, we have inflation, everything's going up around us, and so now would actually be a good time before the pricing actually gets up a little bit higher. So. Um, I hope you take this video in the way that it was intended. Just me, Ron, saying to you, um, don't be upset that there's a trade-in um, promotion going on. Look at it as an opportunity. This is an opportunity for all of you to consider, you know, is my device working properly? Is my technology old? Are my clients looking at this technology saying, hmm, he, the, he, she has a an older device, but so and so down the road has the new Mandalay Q9. Maybe I'll, you know, go over to that practitioner and work with them because they have the newer technology. So you got to look at all these different things and make the decision yourself. We're not forcing you; we're just giving you the information so that you can look at your your technology, which one you have, and uh, you know, look at your computer. Am I on Windows 10 or am I on Windows 11? If you are not, then maybe it's time to upgrade your software and your device to the new technology. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I tried to do my best to make it simple and easy to understand. And, you know, these are my opinions, my opinions only. I just want to see that everybody gets the right information so that you can make an educated decision for the trade-in promotion. Thank you.